It's nice to hear those sounds, isn't it? (laughs) Well, good morning. And welcome to our service of worship this morning. It is indeed good to be here. And a special welcome to all of our guests and visitors who are with us this morning and sharing in this sacred day as we welcome Ellie and Sully into our midst as beloved children of God. Um, And Annie, it's good to have you back. Annie's been on holidays, and she's back with us, and Petra and Scott are away camping, and uh, welcome to Rebecca as well. Uh, Rebecca's uh, moving back to town. Rebecca's my daughter, one of my daughters, and uh, she's moving back to town and is going to join in with some of the music this year, so we're delighted that you're here to play as well. Uh, Just a few announcements before we begin today. I welcome everybody to stay for a glass of lemonade on the lawn as uh, we kind of wrap up our our month of July, and uh, I will be leaving on study leave and holidays this uh, uh, tomorrow, actually. (laughs) And uh, and you're welcome to attend Burford United Church. Uh, Our friends from Burford have been with us for the month of July, and they worship at 10 o'clock. Uh, And so please, during the month of August, feel free to uh, join with them uh, during their time of worship together. Yes. Oh, thank you. Okay, so that's an invitation if you're up early to join them for coffee. Thank you. That's great. Um, I just want to say a little bit before we begin the service today, uh, the responses for you, the congregation, will be on the screen, uh, and they are always in the bold print. Um, Some of the hymns I'll invite you to stand for, 
Um, but please, make yourself at home. Um, welcome to uh, our family here, and uh, we always strive to make this a place where you feel as though uh, you're coming home and a place where you belong. Uh, one of the traditions which I think is really neat today as we think about the font at the front, uh, Marilyn Albin shared this story with me a couple of weeks ago when we had our outdoor service and I wanted to share it with you today. So this font was uh, dedicated in memory of Marilyn and Barb and Wayne, um, of their mom, Eva Peart, after she passed away by her husband Clarence and by the family. Uh, and Eva and Clarence took in uh, foster babies uh, when they were first born and nurtured them uh, until they were adopted into other families. And so it was very fitting that after she passed, uh, Clarence wanted to do something special. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I have this piece of the story correct. This font was carved out of a piece of cherry wood that um, was in the family uh, and made out of that. And uh, so uh, Leanne, who's Sully's mom, was one of the first babies to be baptized out of this font, um, dedicated in memory of her great-grandmother, Sully's great-great-grandmother. Um, and so it's rather fitting that Sully will be baptized. And then Ellie is a new part of our community here, uh, um, not part of the tradition, but part of a new beginning and welcoming new people into our family of faith. It's nice to have a balance of the old and of the new. So let us gather our hearts and minds as we come from the busy world in which we live to rest ourselves in the presence of God in this place. Would you join with me in our responsive call to worship? God of the past, who whispered in the prophet's ears, who rescued us from sin's slavery, we are here to thank you. God of the future, who is tearing down the old world and building your kingdom in our midst, we are here because we trust you. God of the present, who in the giftedness of our diversity creates us to be one people, we are here to praise you. God of life that surprises us when we find it within us, we celebrate your grace. Let us worship God as we sing. abundantly and constantly we come here in need not of wealth not of treasure not of security not of power not of notoriety no we come here in need of you in need of your strength and wisdom boldness and resolve care and love peace and charity to love more to serve more to wonder more and to be more Help us to come to cast off our narrow worldly expectations and accept your gift 
of all that we need in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I invite us to stand together as you are able as we sing, Would You Bless Our Homes and Families. gospel reading for this morning comes from the gospel of luke chapter 12 and i will be reading from the new revised standard updated edition someone in the crowd said to him teacher tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me but he said to him friend who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you and he said to them, take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them this parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. This is God's word for us this day. Thanks be to God. Amen. We come to time in our service um, of confession. 
And the act of confessing our sin is not simply a recognition of our own faults and wrongs, but also an opportunity to receive God's mercy and share in God's abundant grace for our lives. So as God's beloved children, we are invited to come to our God with the fullness of our lives, to admit our love and our hate, to admit our faith and our fears, trusting in God's mercy. So let us make our confession first as we pause just for a moment in silent prayer. Would you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, at times we feel so frail and fragile, getting blown about by the latest crisis, by bad news, by our own short tempers and failings. You call us to hold fast to what is good, but so often we flounder, unable to find that solid thing that will center us again. Help us, we pray. Help us to see you as our center and to cling to the good that you create in the world. Help us to set aside all our jealousies and prejudices, all of our betrayals and lies, all that adds to the world's hurt. Help us to grow even more into Christ's likeness that we will bear his love and truth to the world. We pray in his name. Amen. Friends, rejoice and be glad when you hear the good news. Christ came searching for us, calling us by name, leading us to God's kingdom. And so it is in Christ we become new people. Broken, we are made whole. Lost, we are found. Forsaken, we are restored to new life. This indeed is good news for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we will sing our baptismal hymn, and I'm going to invite the uh, two families to come forward during the singing of the second verse uh, and join me up here at the front. Try. 
Siblings in Christ, let us celebrate God's gift of grace given to us in the sacrament of baptism. There is one body and one spirit. We have one hope in Christ. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, creator of us all. And out of the waters of baptism, we rise with new life. Forgiven, renewed, and one with Christ, members of Christ's body, listen now to the record of Jesus' radical concern for welcoming children. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant, and he said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God is like a child, will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on them and bless them. Friends, baptism is a symbolic action that signifies the new life God gives us as we join the church community. Baptism uses water as a symbolic cleansing that signifies the acceptance of new life within the church family. The sacrament of baptism is the single rite of initiation into the Christian community, the church. And we believe the gift of God's love doesn't depend on our ability to understand it. So we baptize people as infants right up through adulthood. Our song of faith reminds us that baptism by water in the name of the Holy Trinity is the means by which we are received at any age into the covenanted community of the church. It is the ritual that signifies our rebirth in faith and cleansing by the power of God. Baptism signifies the nurturing, sustaining, and transforming power of God's love and our grateful response to God's love. And now I'm going to invite Fred Joyner, the chair of our council, to introduce... On family. behalf of the congregation of Bethelstone United Church, I present Sullivan Ronald Lupine, son of Justin and Leanne Lupine. Eleanor Patricia Schutz, daughter of Laura Pipkins and Laura Schutz, for initiation, initiation into the body of Christ through baptism. And so I ask now uh, you to the parents, putting your trust in the grace and love of Jesus Christ, do you desire to have your child baptized? If so, answer, I do. Will you share your faith with your child, encouraging them with your words and your actions, walking with them in the way of Jesus? If so, answer, I will, with God's help. And will you join with your brothers and sisters in this Christian community of faith, sharing in the life and work and ministry of Jesus Christ? If so, answer, I will, with God's help. And now to the godparents, and unfortunately, um, Katie and John, Eleanor's aunt and uncle, had to stay home because their daughter was sick. So they are here with us in spirit today, but I'm going to ask of you, Lily, as uh, Sully's uh, godparent, will you, by your prayers and witness, help Sullivan grow in his faith, trusting in God's spirit to guide and direct you? If so, answer, I will, with God's help. Thank you. And now to you, the congregation. Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer God's gift of grace in baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, your support and care for these children and their family as they live and grow in faith? If so, please answer, we will with God's help. We will with God's help. Would you join with me in our new creed? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, 
to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we bless you for the gift of life and within it the gift of water. Over its unshaped promise, your spirit hovered at creation. By water comes the growth of the earth. Through water, you led the children of Israel to freedom. In the waters of the Jordan, your son Jesus was baptized. Now may God's spirit be upon us and these waters of daily use, which we now use to baptize and welcome. And may this water be a sign for all of new life in Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Sullivan Ronald Lapine, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the cross of the Christ, you are marked as his forever. Okay, if you want to just place your hands on him. Sullivan, the power of the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful witness of Jesus Christ. And now may the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, and the Holy Spirit keep you. Amen. Oh, she's a little lighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eleanor Patricia Schutz, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Ellie, with the sign of the cross of Christ, you are marked as his forever. Eleanor, the power of the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful witness of Jesus Christ. And now, may the grace of Christ attend you and the love of God surround you and the Holy Spirit keep you. Gracious God, giver of life, you have called us by name and pledged to each of us your faithful love. We pray today for your blessing upon Sullivan, upon Eleanor and their parents, 
Watch over them and guide them as they continue to grow in faith. Remind us all of the promises of our own baptism and renew our trust in you. Strengthen us to do your will and to serve you with joy. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And this candle you receive today is a reminder of the light of Christ that guides and directs your path. And I encourage you to save it and to bring it out on the anniversary of their baptism and to light it and to continually remember their baptism. And Fred, I'm going to invite you if you could hand the gifts to uh, each family. They're over here, maybe a few. And you're welcome to blow the candle out if you, if you want. <laughs> book first. Sully? So receive this book as a tool of your faith. In the reading the ancient stories of our faith, may you and your child grow together in knowledge and wisdom and understanding. And the book we're presenting to them today is Archbishop Desmond Tutu's book of stories and beautiful pictures from artists all around the world uh, that accompany them. And we invite you to receive this blanket today as a reminder that God loves you and so do we. Inside the blanket, a few years ago, we put these together at Vacation Bible Camp, and inside the blanket are several hearts that were prayed for and put inside. Uh, if you hold it up the light, you can see the hearts inside. These are our prayers for you. So Sullivan, into the household of faith, we welcome you with joy and thanksgiving. And Eleanor, into the household of faith, we welcome you with joy and thanksgiving. And we respond, we the members of the body of Christ, we are inheritors of God's promises. In the name of Christ, we welcome you. Let us pray. Oh Lord, may my words come from you. May they fall upon open hearts and open lives, ready to connect with your gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, in the foreword to the children's story Bible that was just gifted to Ellie and to Sully, this morning, Archbishop Desmond Tutu writes a wonderful message that speaks 
to the foundation of our life of faith. And he begins this way. Do you know that God loves you? The Bible says that each and every one of us, every girl and every boy is a very special person. God says, before you were born, I knew you. God made you just as you are so you could be your own unique and precious gift to the world. And God made every one of us different, but he loves all of us equally. For we are all God's children. And no matter what happens, God will never stop loving you. But God also wants us to fill our lives with love. Jesus says we should love God, love other people, and love ourselves. So how do we do this? I think that is a great question as to think about today, about how we live in our world as a people of faith. Where do we find meaning? In what and whom do we place our trust? These are central questions in every human life, and there are no shortage of answers vying for our acceptance in today's world. Well, Archbishop Tutu answers with a simply worded paraphrase of Jesus' golden rule. Do what is right, be kind to others, and be friends with God. In the parable from Luke's Gospel, Jesus' focus is what lies at the center of the main character's heart and offers a warning of giving in to greed, of solely focusing on building bigger barns. And I think this is a challenge to think carefully about. Where do we place our allegiances? On what do we depend for our security and our life? And how do we use the gifts we have been given? Do we use them for our own selfish game? Or to make a difference in the lives of those we meet, in the life of our community in which we live, and more broadly in our world today? One commentator, in reflecting on the concerns of the rich fool, as he is named in our parable today, believes that he was concerned with no one's opinion save his own. His only point of reference was himself. His crops, his barns, his pleasure, his supposedly unlimited future. He was the center of his own universe. He gave no thought to ethical responsibility towards others or accountability to God. To be rich towards God as Jesus followers, we must think of ourselves as laborers in the master's fields, rather than private landowners answerable to no one. The harvest is Christ, not ours, and we are called to use the resources at our disposal to help others and in turn bring honor and glory to God, the giver of all that is good. Another scripture came to mind as I was reading this week's gospel. It may sound familiar to you as well. Do not store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rusts cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. For wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Now, it is not that wealth that Jesus is opposed to here in this scripture, but rather it is what we do with the resources that we have been given that's at the heart of Jesus' message. Think what this man could have left behind the night his life was demanded of him. Instead of offspring fighting over who gets which barnful, he could have helped build a whole community with food, decently paying work, accessible health care. We need a holy imagination for this type of thinking and listening with the ears of our heart for God's direction. United Church uh, musician and storyteller Linnea Good, who uh, we often hear from, who tells us scriptures some Sundays, 
wrote a song many, many years ago to reflect upon that call of faith in our lives. Where does your focus for life and your treasure lie, she asks, for there will be your heart also. May her words inspire each of us to consider how we use the good gifts we have been given to do what is right, to be kind to others, and to grow in our faith and in our relationship with God and our neighbor. And this is what she writes. Clouds hanging low in the sky, wind comes a-circling by. How can we savor the wonder of this day? Laughter that dances on air, if you had only one prayer, would a thank you might be all you'd say. So lay your burdens down, sing your own life's part, and there where your treasure lies, there is your heart. Mornings do melt into day. Life is a moment's delay. How can we hold to the things that have no touch? Money and talent and time, these are the gifts of our kind, offerings here to a life we love so much. So lay your burdens down, sing your own life's part, and there where your treasure lies, there is your heart. Water and air that are clean, space for the children to dream. Each of us cradles a vision of how this could be. So shower your vision with care and offer to God with your prayer, your money, your talent, your time gratefully. So lay your burdens down and sing your own life's part. And there where your treasure lies, there too is your heart. It's a simple choice, really, that one that should be easy. Do we create need, building our lives around a void that we feed and feed, but is never satisfied? Storing more than we will ever use to silence our fear while ignoring the cries of those we have left empty? Or do we create plenty? Finding satisfaction in enough, finding joy in what can't be owned, and life in what is not for sale. Seeking to share life and joy and food and wealth so that these blessings are multiplied and celebrated in our homes and families, in our communities and neighborhoods, in our countries and continents. May we learn to always make the simple choice to create plenty wherever and however we may. May it be so in your life and in mine. not mine.
As we come to the time in our service to offer our gifts, we remember that prosperity is given to the greater community of believers so that all of God's children may benefit. Let us demonstrate that we are the body of Christ through our extravagant sharing of God's blessings this day. Let us give out of our joy rather than a sense of obligation as we offer to our God the gifts of our hearts. Let us pray. Abundant God, we bring you our gifts in gratitude for your generosity. Bless and multiply these gifts in Jesus' name so that they can spread your goodness in the world and touch the lives of those in need for Christ's sake, in whose name we pray. Amen. And our offering will now be received. Let us pray. God of all who sees past our human distinction, who cherishes our uniqueness and our similarities, we bring to you our prayers for others and ourselves. As the pandemic continues, as poverty ravages, as the climate crisis destroys, we pray for our world and for all those seeking new ways to bring your peace and your justice. Help each of us to have the strength to change our ways, to care more, to love more, and to be better protectors of your creation, both our fellow people and the environment. As people in our country and our community struggle with all the challenges that this time brings, we pray for all those feeling lost or alone, all those who go without, all those who are grieving, and all those hoping for a better tomorrow. Help each of us to bring hope, love, and the joyous light of Jesus to all whom we meet. 
As our church continues to change and adapt as we journey together, we pray for this community of faith. Help each of us to have wisdom and happiness as we continue to find ways to do your work in this place and in this time as we live out our baptismal call. Bless Sully and Ellie and their parents as they journey together through this life. Help them to trust in you, their creator, to find true meaning and purpose through a life of faith. God of all, as we dedicate ourselves once more to your service, we pray for ourselves. Help each of us to have a boldness to continue, the grace to forgive, and the sight to see your love in our lives and in our world this day and every day. Keep our hearts open to all those around us. Open our eyes and our hearts so that we may offer healing and peace to others. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn today, In Christ Alone. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together.
and known by name, share the inheritance you have been given through Christ. Care for creation, comfort the weary, console the brokenhearted and challenge injustice. Called by God to be Christ's body in the world, share freely and fully the gifts that each of you have been given through the Spirit. Serve others, seek peace, show love, and speak truth to power. God is your treasure and your home, so go, knowing yourselves beloved. Go, knowing yourselves blessed. Go, knowing that the Holy One goes with you. Go in peace. Amen. Beside you, all around you, he is with you. 